Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video I am doing a quick pattern review for the last viewing of hashtag so much colors 90s edition. So yes, this is the last viewing for hashtag so much colors, but I did make one bonus outfit that I will show in a later video. All right. Also today, the last color is brown tan and I am collaborating with at sewing dash and more Eris. So uh, Eris is not a YouTuber, she is just an Instagrammer. So you can follow her, I'll put her Instagram handle in the description box below, as well as on the screen as well. Now, before we get started, go up, don't forget to go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe button, and also turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, we're gonna get into a quick pattern review and then off to the sew along. Now, the sew along is, actually a viewer request. So this so along is for, for is because one of my subscribers asked me to do this so along about a month ago. It was put on my request line. So I'm going to show you how to get over there here shortly that on the community tab, all you have to do is go down to the request line and right here is where you put your request in. It could be any pattern. And if I choose your pattern, I will highlight you, but you have to put it right here, not in a video. It has to be put right here in the request line. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into the pattern review. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the pattern description. So the pattern description for New Look 6707 is the pattern that I am reviewing today. Um, the pattern review is a V-neck button-down shirt. It has You could do it with or without the ruffles right here. Also, it has two bust darts um, right here at the front. It has a five buttons in the uh, button-down portion of the blouse. You also have some pleats going on at the sleeves and then it has a sleeve band. So that is the pattern description for this top. Let's go ahead and get into the skill level. So the skill level for this pattern is rated as easy, I believe, on the Simplicity website. Do I feel that it's easy? Yes and no. So I would say yes, it's easy to construct just the blouse, but when it gets to the pleat portion of the sleeve cap, it's not as easy as you may think if you're a true beginner. Also, the ruffle details on um, the collar area, it can be a little fuzzy and a little bit tricky as well, which is why I decided to do this view with the um, ruffles at the collar instead of view B. And plus, this was also a request and I also had the pattern, all right? Let's get into Notion shoes. So the only notions that you need for this pattern is five half inch buttons. I use brown buttons for mine because I was going for like a Chippendale inspired 90s look. Now Chippendale came out, I believe in this early 80s <laughs> and I'm an 80s baby. So I grew up watching Chippendale and because the movie came out just a couple of weeks ago, I was game to do this as a Chippendale look. That's why I wore boots in the hot heat, okay? <laughs> So let's talk about fabric use. So the fabric use for this uh, project was a Toss Sunflower Harvest. I'm gonna put the actual fabric up on the screen so you can see and in the description box below as well. But this fabric is from Joann's in their Harvest collection. So you could go to your Joann's and find this fabric in the Harvest collection. I'm not gonna get too much into pattern pieces because you'll see that in the sew along, but the pattern pieces is eight pattern pieces. The only, so I use pattern piece one through nine without using pattern piece number three because pattern three, pattern piece number three, I believe is the tab. So that's the only pattern piece that I did not use, but it's pattern piece one through nine. Let's talk about pattern sizing. So this pattern only comes in one envelope. It comes in four to 20, I believe. And the size that I cut was a size 16. I did not need to make any modifications for this um, whatsoever. Now, 
I was a little nervous about cutting the 16 because I think the finished garment measurement for a 16 was a 42 and I normally go for a 43, but it fits well in the um, bust area and the waist area. So I was, I was game. <laughs> it was great. Um, did it look like the photos and the drawings on the pattern envelope? Yes, it does. Um, outside of the busy fabric, yes, I feel like it looked exactly like the pattern envelope. Are the instructions easy to follow? Yes, they are easy to follow. I mean, it was super easy to do. There's no place in the instructions that you will get tripped up with if you don't look at the sew along. I think that, you know, an intermediate beginner can do this with no problem. Beginner may get tripped up at the pleat area in the sleeve. But other than that, the instructions are super easy to follow. Likes and dislikes. Okay. So I'm gonna have to tell you the backstory of this. So first, when I seen this on the request line, I was like, okay, yes, I'll do it. Um, I pulled the pattern, cut it out and everything, picked my fabric because I'm not sure, I'm gonna try to bring it closer so you can see, but this fabric is not only sunflowers, but it has some acorns in the fabric as well. So that's why I chose this fabric to do with the tan shorts, which I'll get to here in in just a moment the tan shorts i'm not doing a pattern review because it's the same shorts that i have done three times now butterick 6354 which is also simplicity 9290 but back to what i was saying about the likes and dislikes so i picked up the fabric i cut it out and i got all the way to the end of the sew along except for the sleeves by the time i tried it on in the mirror no makeup uh, hair was already tied down in a bonnet and everything. I was not feeling this top at all. My daughter wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. I sent it to two friends um, and my sister. They were like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> and this is a prime example of me saying, do not, do not look at a garment without your accessories. If, you're, if you normally do makeup with your photos, put it on and everything, and then assess your garment. Because I'm gonna tell you, before the photos and everything, it was a lot of dislikes going on. But I don't have any dislikes for this pattern right now. It's nothing but love. But just take the tip from me because this, this shirt was getting ready to be my older sister's shirt. <laughs> Cause that's who gets all my clothes when I decide that, you know, I, I either wore it a lot, I had enough or I'm making more clothes. So she gets all, all of my clothes from the prior year. So enough about that. There's no dislikes at all. It's all like, let's talk about first time experiences. So do I have, did I have any first time experiences? Um, no, I have done darts. I have done pleats in the sleeve cap. I have done sleeve bands. I have put on buttons. I have done facing. So no, that um, there's no new first time experiences whatsoever. Would I sew it again? To be honest, no. Um, it's not that I wouldn't sew it again because I don't like the pattern. I actually like the pattern, but I think I'm good for one blouse with ruffles in my wardrobe. I don't think I need a lot of um, button down shirts with ruffles in my wardrobe. Maybe you would want to do that, but because I saw a lot of stuff that I could wear, you know, work-wise, on camera and everything, I don't think that I would want to sew something with a lot of ruffles, um, just for me. But no, I wouldn't sew it again. Would I recommend this pattern to others? Of course, I would recommend this pattern to others as well. And for my pattern rating, I'm going to stamp this pattern a four out of five. Now, I'm not stamping it a four out of five because I dislike the pattern. I'm stamping it a four out of five for a couple of reasons. One being that it could have gave a long sleeve option with a uh, cuff. It could have gave that because the only option you have is a short sleeve. So if you wanted to make this during like your fall or winter time, you have to extend the sleeve, which is that sleeve cap. You have to extend the sleeve in order to do that. Another thing is they could have gave a crew neck style um, collar instead of just a, I mean, you don't have to do the ruffles because view B is not the ruffles, but it could have gave a different, you know, kind of collar as well. So, I mean, just be mindful of when you pick up this pattern, it is a new look pattern. New look tend to run small, but they have, 
you know, enlarge their pattern size zine as well. Well, that's all for the pattern review. I hope you enjoyed this pattern review. So now that I did enough talking, let's go ahead and get right on right on over to the sew along. All right, so let's get into the next sew along. This is a viewer request. Someone who is subscribed to me have requested for me to do this pattern on my request line. So because I am doing this as part of hashtag so much colors, the last project, this is not the actual color. However, this is just the sew along for the top portion and the shorts that I am making will be the color for the um, so much colors. But this is what we're doing today. The sew along is new look 6707. I will be doing view A, a size 16 on this pattern. So let's go ahead and get into the tools and the supplies. Let's get into the tools and supplies you need in order to create six new look 6707. So it's basically your normal sewing supplies. So of course you need the pattern, new look 6707. You also need pens. You need a seam ripper just in case you make a mistake. Your marking tools, I have a disappearing ink and a white soluble marker as well. You need scissors. I use one for paper, one for fabric. I am never mixed the two there. I actually cut my fabric out with rotary cutters, so I have one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there. I have a point turner to poke out any um, corners like your, my collar and things of that sort, so I have a point turner for that. Also, you may need your seam gauge to press up your hem if you do not want to create a basting stitch and press it up. And then the only thing that you need outside of your buttons, you need five half inch buttons, and then you need your seam roll. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I say this in almost every tutorial. You want to press your seam with your seam roll, not just with your iron board. So get in the habit of pressing your seams to make it look professionally done with your seam roll. Now that's all the tools that you need in order to construct this blouse. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get right on into the pattern pieces. Let's get into the pattern pieces that you will need in order to construct New Look 6707. So the first pattern piece is pattern piece number one, which is your front. Like I said, I am doing view A for this sew along, but you need to cut two of fabric for uh, the front. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number two, which is the back. You need to cut one on the fold of fabric. And take note that pattern piece number two is the pattern piece is facing down um, on the fabric and then you need to cut all the way around on the fold. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number four. It's your collar ruffle. Your collar ruffle for view A, you need to cut two. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number five, which is your front facing. You need to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. You also need pattern piece number three, which is your collar. You need to cut two on the fold of fabric and then cut one on the fold of interfacing. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number six, which is your back facing. You need to cut one on fold of fabric and one on fold of interfacing. Next is pattern piece number eight, which is your sleeve band. You need to cut two of fabric. Next one is pattern piece number seven, which are your sleeve. You need to cut two of fabric. And then the last pattern piece you will not cut of fabric is pattern piece number nine, which is your buttonhole guide. Now that's all the pattern pieces that you need in order to construct this garment. So let's go ahead and talk about pattern instructions. So let's get into the pattern instructions. So for New Look 6707, you will need a total of nine pattern pieces. I just walked you through the pattern pieces that you will need. So um, I am doing view A, so the cutting layout for 44 to 45 inch fabric is the same. Just make note that pattern piece number two is cut on the fold with the wrong side of your fabric facing up, right side of the pattern piece facing down. So let's go ahead and look at the instructions. Just take note that the seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you don't know, look where it says sewing directions on how to pin, press, ease stitch, edge stitch, finishing, stay stitch, you know, basically all the under stitching and ease stitching. If you don't know what those mean, look right there and it'll tell you what those items mean, okay? 
So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and stay stitch pattern piece number one and pattern piece number two, stay stitch at the same time to cut down on how many times you go back and forth to the sewing machine. After we do that, I would stay stitch and do darts at the same time. So pattern, so step number one and two can be done together. Step number three, we're going to sew uh, front to back at the shoulders seams. I will not be doing my side seams at this time because I like to uh, sew using the flat method for my sleeves. Now I do understand that the sleeves are pleated. Um, so basically I will probably just do exactly what it says in the instructions this time to basically just follow along with the instructions instead of doing it my preferred way okay so we'll be sewing both the shoulder seams and the side seams together in step number three step number four we will go ahead and do the collar for basically um you should already have your collar interface at this point so pattern piece so step number four should be already done so moving on to five we'll go ahead and construct our ruffles in five and six pin it onto our collar in seven attach the other th collar which the one with the facing is the facing collar and then we'll attach our regular collar over the ruffles and the facing collar. You'll pull it out and base on number nine. Number 10, we will apply our front facing and our back facings together at the shoulder seam, attach it to our um, blouse in 11 and then under stitch 12. We'll go ahead and finish it off by tacking it to our sleeves in 13, well our shoulder seam. And then 14, we'll start constructing the sleeve on 14 through 20. Then after that, we will go ahead and um, prepare our facing to finish off our facing, hem it, and then make our buttonholes. That's all the instructions for this pattern. So let's go ahead and get right on into the sewing. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the sewing for this blouse, New Look 6707. So go ahead and grab pattern piece number one and pattern piece number two. So the first thing you're going to do is stay stitch. So what you're going to do is stay stitch from the top all the way to this dot. You do not need to back stitch at the beginning or at the end at all. You're going to do that for pattern piece number one. And then on pattern piece number two, you want to stay stitch around the neck edge. Now I have already done my stay stitching. So what I did for the back pattern piece number two is I started in the center back, stay stitch to one end, flipped it over on the wrong side and then stay stitch to the opposite end. That's how I normally do my stay stitch for the back. Now, after you stay stitch, you're going to make your darts in the front. Now I have already done mine. We have done darts so many times on this channel. So I'm pretty sure at this point you are capable of making your darts. Once you make your darts, you're going to press your darts down towards the um, bottom of your blouse. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead and with right sides together, we're going to attach our front to back at the shoulder and side seams. So I'm just going to attach both of those together, right sides together, and I'm going to pin matching up those notches so you have a notch, and make sure you have transferred all your notches and your dots for all of your pieces. All right, so I'm going to pin both shoulder seams and both side seams. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the shoulders pin as well as the side seam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end and sew across both of your shoulders. And you're going to do the same thing, backstitch at the beginning and at the end and sew your side seam as well. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have went ahead and attached my shoulders right front to back at the shoulder seams and at the side seams. The next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and move your blouse over to the side and grab pattern piece number four, which are your ruffle pieces. So just go ahead and grab pattern piece number four, your collar ruffle. And what we're going to do, this is my collar ruffle, you should have two. What you're going to do is attach them together you should have a notch so you're just going to go ahead and pin those together right sides together and you're going to stitch those together using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance 
You're going to backstitch at the beginning and at the end and press your seams open. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the collar ruffles attached right sides together, and I press the seams open after I stitched them at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. The next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and fold your ruffles in half. I would advise you to press it, which is what I'm going to do. You don't have to um, press it because you're gonna turn them right side out. But what you're gonna do is you have a dot right here. You're going to sew the ends together, basically right on that dot. Now I'm pretty sure that dot is at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you're just going to backstitch at the beginning, so 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and trim it down. Go ahead and do that on both sides and then turn your, um, collar ruffle right side out. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and uh, did right sides together, I pressed it and then I basically made gathering stitches by making my first roll using a basting stitch at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then the second roll at a half an inch. Now what you're going to do is go ahead and pull up your gathering stitches to create a ruffle. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my ruffles or my collar ruffle gathered, go ahead and grab your collar, which is pattern piece number three. It's the one that is not interfaced, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to pin the ruffle to your collar. So you have two notches, I mean two dots. So you want to pin where the dot is meeting up, but your ruffle is going to be touching the, so basically the, it's hard to explain this, but make sure you are pinning the ruffle to the unnotched edge of your collar, like it says in the instruction. So you're just going to pin, if you need to pull up some more gathers or let some gathers out, you can do so, but you're just going to pin all the way around, making sure the raw edge of your, your um, ruffle is towards the raw edge of your collar. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and have my ruffle, my collar ruffle pinned all the way to my collar, the one that's not interfaced, what you're going to do is just go ahead and base this on all the way around. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my collar ruffles basted onto my collar, go ahead and grab the collar facing, that's the collar that's interfaced, and you're just going to lay it on top right, matching everything up, and you're going to basically pin all the way around and sew it together, okay? So just make sure that you pin. And you're just going to basically pin all the way around. So go ahead and pin all the way around your collar now. All right, so now that I have my collar facing, which is the interface collar, onto my collar, making sure that my ruffles are basically kind of, not actually pressed in, but make sure that it is not puckering out towards the um, outside or the edge. So just make sure that it's, you know, basically you pin your collar over your, uh, your collar facing over your collar and your ruffles, okay? So now, anyway, next step is back stitch at the beginning, so I'm using a regular length stitch and 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, so all the way around your collar, and back stitch at the end. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my um, collar sewn on, I went ahead and trimmed it down. Now I'm gonna turn it right, well, I also clipped around my curve, making little notches right there. So now what I'm gonna do is turn it right side out and give it a press all the way around, making sure you press and clip any loose threads, and then you're going to base the top portion to keep it all closed, okay? So just go ahead and pull that out. It should look something like this. So go ahead and pull it out now. All right, so now that I have it turned out, make sure you press this. Once you press it, what you're going to do is create a basting stitch and just base around this notched edge right here of your collar. Once you do that, 
After you baste, we're gonna go ahead and pin it onto our top. So go ahead and baste it now. All right, so now that I have my collar pressed, and then I baste at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance around the inner portion of my collar. Now, one thing I wanna make note of is this, this side right here is the interface side. This side that's up facing me is the uninterface side. So go ahead and grab your blouse, your top, whatever you wanna call it, right? And I'm going to place the portion right here that has the interfacing on top of my top. With right sides together, you're going to pin at the notches in the back and pin all the way around. Okay, so I'm gonna pin at both of those notches. And then you should have a dot right here. This dot meets up with your shoulder seam. So make sure you are pinning this dot right here, hope you can see that, to your shoulder seam on both sides. And make sure that your seam, your seam allowance on your shirt is facing towards the back of your garment. All right, you're gonna do this on both sides. And then you have a dot right here. So that dot meets up with this dot right here on your top. So you're going to pin that dot right there, okay? And it should look like this. And you're just gonna pin. And then just put some pins in between the rest of it and pin all the way around. Go ahead and do that now. If you need to clip your uh, shirt to make it uh, give a little bit, you can just clip to the st stitching like that, but do not clip through your stitching. So go ahead and pin your blouse, your collar to your blouse now. So now that I have my collar pinned onto my shirt using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, now this is what I'm going to do. If you want to just back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way across using a regular length stitch, you can. What I'm going to do is start in the back, back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way to one, stop, one side and back stitch at the end. Then I'm gonna flip my blouse over starting back at the back and then sew the opposite direction. I just find that to be better for me but do whichever way that's best for you, okay? So go ahead and sew your collar onto your shirt now. All right, so now that I have my collar sewn onto my top, go ahead and move your uh, top or blouse out of the way. We'll need that in just a second. Go ahead and grab your facing pieces. Now I have done facing many of times on the channel. You're going to need your front and back facing, which is pattern piece number five and six. And what you're going to do is open out pattern piece number six, which was cut on the fold. And then you're just going to place your um, front pattern pieces to your back pattern pieces, right sides together, pin at the notch the top and the bottom. All right, so now that I have them pinned using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and sew across both seam allowance. Once you do that, go ahead and press your seams open and then finish off the outer edge, okay? So you want to finish off this edge right here on the outer edge that you do not have any um, notches on or anything. So just finish that off. You could finish it off with your serger. You could turn in a fourth of an inch and finish it off. Pink and shears, whatever you need to do. Go ahead, go ahead and do that now. Just finish the entire outer, outer edge, including the bottom off now. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and sewn my facing pieces together front to back at the shoulder seams, I pressed it open. I went ahead and add my label. So if you look at the back with a smile is what I like to call it, put your label in right there. You might wanna do it now before you attach your facing to your um, top. So this is what it's looking like and I also finished off the outer edge of my facing, okay? That's what you see right here on the outer edge. Now go ahead and grab your blouse. And what you're going to do now is pin your facing to your blouse right sides together, okay? So you should have 
two notches in the back and you're going to make sure you match this portion up to your shoulder seams, okay? So now, I know you're like, how do I do that? Because I have a whole bunch of stuff going on right now, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna, going to do is look at my front and make sure that matches, okay? And I'm going to pin my front portion together first. That's the first thing I'm going to pin. And make sure that you pin the front sections together on both sides. All right, so now that I have this portion uh, pinned, now what I'm going to do is pin my shoulder seam. So make sure that this portion that you press open is in the center of that shoulder seam and make sure that on your blouse, the, the seam allowance is pressed towards the back and you're going to pin there. You will make sure everything fits in just a second, okay? Once I do that, I'm going to make sure that this portion right here is fit and I'm going to pin there and then I'm going to pin all the way around my top blouse, whatever you're calling it, I'm just gonna call it a blouse and make sure that you pin all the way around your bl blouse. Go ahead and do that now. Alright, so now that I have it pinned all the way around like I did for the other portion, I'm going to start in the back using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way to this dot over here. Once I get to this dot, I'm going to pivot, still making sure that I'm lined up with 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to sew all the way down to the bottom and back stitch at the end. Once I do that, I'm going to flip my top over this direction, starting back at the back using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and then do the exact same thing, come all the way across to this dot right here. Once I get to that dot, I'm just going to make sure that I'm lined up with 5 8 of an inch seam allowance still and then sew all the way down and back stitch at the end. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my facing pin onto my shirt or blouse, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and trim my facing down. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my facing trimmed down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my ironing station, press my seams up towards the facing, and then I'm going to understitch. Understitch is done at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. You're going to be understitching on your facing, not your collar. So go to your ironing station, press your seams up towards your facing, and then understitch a fourth of an inch on your facing all the way around your facing. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my facing trimmed down, I understitched, I pressed it to the inside. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to mark from the bottom hem up five inches. So I have a little mark right here. I'm going to bring it towards the camera so you can see that. I marked it right there because I measured up and that's where I'm going to stop sewing. And I pinned all the way around the inside portion of my um, facing, okay? The finished edge of my facing. I also marked five inches up on this side as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a basting stitch and I'm going to base one inch from the press edge right here of my facing. I'm just gonna base one inch in all the way around starting at that marking that I made five inches from the bottom and go all the way around and stop at this five inch from the bot this five inch from the bottom as well go ahead and do that now all right so now that i went ahead and basted an inch from the finished edge which is the inside edge it's an inch from that if you go from the right side it's about an inch and a half in um, so just make reference of which way you do it but i did create like a dash line on mine an inch in all the way around all right so now what we're going to do is finish off our facing so what you're going to do is turn it onto itself like this and pin on both sides okay 
Make sure you are turning this on to itself on both sides. I'm gonna do the other side to show you what it is. Now I was supposed to start at five inches, which is there. So I'm just going to remove this basting stitch because I accidentally went all the way down to the end. Just make sure you do not do the same thing that I did. So go if you did, go ahead and remove it now. All right, so now that I went ahead and pulled that basting stitch out that I accidentally went all the way to the end, what you're gonna do is turn it onto itself like, like so. And pin the bottom as well. And then what we're gonna do is using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And you're going to finish off your facing the same way on both sides. So start at the beginning, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch. Back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I turned the facing onto itself and sewn using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, the next thing we're gonna do is trim this down. So I'm just going to make a clip right there and then trim down and I'm just gonna leave that peak right there. You don't have to, you could just basically, you, you don't have to leave it at the top, but you can leave it at the bottom there just to mark up your 5 eighths of an inch for your hem. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So basically I'm just gonna trim it down right here and then cut across. And then I'm just gonna trim off the top layer and this is what I have. So now what you're going to do is go ahead and turn it right side out so you have a clean finish. You can use your point turner as well and poke out your corner. And then do the other side the same way. So I'm just going to make sure you clip all your loose threads. I will do mine as well. Use your point turner poke out that corner really good. And now what you want to do is press up your hem. Now the hem allowance is 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you're just going to press up 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, open it out, press to that line, and then press up to encase this. Go ahead and finish off your hem now. All right, so now that I went ahead and finished off my facing, I went ahead and hem the bottom and it looks clean on the inside and the outside. So I know you're wondering like, Rochelle, you skipped over sleeves. No, I know I skipped over the sleeves because that's going to be the last thing that we're going to do for this blouse, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, I don't know what number I'm on or anything. We're gonna go ahead and do our buttonholes. So you do not have to do your buttonholes, but just make your buttonholes on your top. Now. You should have your top with all the fabric to the left of you, okay? And then what you're going to do is grab your buttonhole guide, which is pattern piece number nine. And you're just going to basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin all the way down, making sure that this black line is touching the edge of my blouse. And I'm just going to pin. Now, if you are good with just holding things together with your hands, you could do that, but I'm just going to pin all the way down. So go ahead and pin all the way down your blouse now. All right, so now that I have my buttonhole guide pinned all the way down, all I'm going to do is basically make the buttonhole in my lines in my blouse. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my buttonholes made in the front left side of my blouse, which is the left side looking at it, right side when wearing it, you can go ahead and do your buttonholes if you choose at this moment. That's completely up to you. But what I advise you to do is go ahead and make your permanent stitch along the, from basically from your shoulder seam all the way around the front. 
you need to change that to a regular length stitch and just basically sew at an inch of the way. So basically where you have your basting stitch, you're just gonna cover that up with a regular length stitch and then remove the basting stitch. You could go ahead and make your buttonhole now or you can make it at the very end, all right? So now that we've covered all of that, the last thing we're going to do are our sleeves. So go ahead and move your blouse out the way and grab your sleeves. All right, so go ahead and grab pattern piece number seven, your sleeve. We are finally working on the sleeves. And the reason why I saved it for last is because you wanna do all the time consuming stuff last. I normally would do it first, but I wanted to save this for the last for last to really explain how you do this, okay? So, first things first is I make clips at the very top to tell me where my pleats go. You have, If you have been following me any amount of time, you know that when it comes to pleats or darts or anything, I clip at the very end of those so I know where it's going to go. Now I have my pattern piece on top because it's going to tell me what directions to make my pleats. So for instance, I'm gonna start on the right side. So if I look up here, I made a little notch right here, a little clip. So I'm gonna take this clip and I already made my, which direction I need to make that uh, pleat in. So I'm just gonna take this little clip right here and move it to the other clip. And that tells me that it needs to go to the right. So, and I'm just going to pin both of those together like that. And that's my first pleat. So just make that clip to that clip and I'm just going to pin. It doesn't look much like a pleat right now, but it will, all right? Now, this clip right here, which you can barely see it, will go the opposite direction to the left and I'm going to pin there. Now this clip right here that I have at the top right here, this is going to go to the left. And there's a clip right there. So I'm gonna move this portion over to this portion. And I'm going to pin there. Now I'm gonna move this clip right here over to the opposite side. And I'm going to pin. And you're basically gonna do the same thing all the way across your sleeve. So I'm just gonna show you a few more times how to do this. Take this clip, move over to the left, to the left one. Making sure you match up both clips. If you did clips, if you just did lines, just take your broken lines and do the same thing that I'm doing. Now I'm going to take this clip and move over to that other clip right here and I'm going to pin. Now I'm gonna take this clip, move it over to the right side, to that clip right here. Like so. And pin. And then I'm gonna take the last one and move it over to the right, like this. Right, and I'm going to pin. There's a lot of pleats going on, so just be careful how you pin them, okay? Now, the only thing you need to do is go ahead and base across your upper sleeve. After you base the upper sleeve together where the pleats are, you're going to make gathering stitches. You're only gonna gather from this dot to this dot. So I'm gonna create my first gather at about three eighths of an inch and the second gather at a half of an inch, okay? And then pull up your gather so we could go ahead and attach our sleeve band, okay? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have basted my pleats along the sleeve cap area, I went ahead and made my gathering stitches. Now what you're gonna do is with right side together, you're going to sew your underarm seams together. So go ahead and pin at that notch top and bottom. And then what you're going to do is go to the sewing machine using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end, 
and then finish off your seam allowance. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we had went ahead and sewn the underarm seams together, the next thing I did was go ahead and create gathering stitches around the sleeve cap and I gathered it to where it'll fit on the armhole area. Now just go ahead and move your sleeves off the side. Make sure that you did your uh, rows of gathering stitches right here at the bottom. You will have to gather that onto your sleeve band here shortly, but just move your sleeve off to the side and grab your sleeve band, all right? Now you should have two dots and a notch, and then you should have no um, notches then you have a notch edge. What you're going to do is press up 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the unnotch edge. That's the edge without the dot. Then what you're going to do is go ahead and trim it down to about 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So go ahead and trim it down now. All right, so now that I have it trimmed down, you wanna open it up. It just makes it easier for the next step. Open that edge that you just pressed up, and then with right sides together, you want to sew your sleeve band together at the ends, on the shorter end. So just pin at the notch, and then pin at the top and the bottom. Now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and press your seams open. Once you press it open, make sure you press this um, edge that was pressed under, okay? So if you did not press this edge yet, press up 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then trim it down, okay? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my sleeve band pressed with right sides together, the underarm seam, um, I pressed it 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, pressed it open, and then pressed this bottom edge open. So go ahead and grab your sleeves. Now, the bottom part in between those dots, you should have uh, created gather stitches, gathering stitches, and then just pull up some gathers um, because you will need to fit this, the sleeve onto your band. So now with right sides together, what you're going to do is pin your sleeve to your sleeve band, matching up the underarm seam. So I'm gonna get my underarm seams, which is right here. Make sure that seam is facing the back portion of your sleeve, like this, and you want to pin. Now I'm gonna check to see which side is my double notches, which is this side right here. So I'm gonna make sure that that seam allowance is facing towards the back. Make sure I'm matching, a, matching the underarm seams up right and i'm going to pin now i'm going to turn mine to where the wrong sides are showing i'm going to pin right there you should have a dot so this dot matches up to that dot on your sleeve you're going to pin there you're going to pin the other dot as well and then you're going to pin all the way around making sure your sleeve fit your sleeve fit onto your sleeve band so go ahead and pin all the way around now All right, so now that I have my sleeve band planned onto my sleeve using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna start at the underarm seam, backstitch at the beginning, and sew all the way around using a regular length stitch. Once you do that, trim your seam allowance down and press your seam allowance up towards your sleeve band. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the sleeve band attached to my sleeves, I went ahead and trimmed it down. So now what I'm going to do is make sure that you press your seam allowance up towards the band. And what you're going to do, and this is why I said press your seam allowance up towards the band, you're going to take that press edge right here and put it over. I'm gonna try to do the, bring it up so you can see. Make sure that press edge is a little past that stitching line to where you have a clean finish on the inside like this, okay? But you want to pin on the outside and stitch in the ditch or you could slip stitch, okay? So what I want you to do is go ahead and go ahead and pin all the way around if you're going to uh, stitch in a ditch like I am. If not, you could just hand sew this together, okay? So go ahead and pin all the way around now. All right, so now that I have the sleeve band pinned right over the 
finished edge of the sleeve band to make it a clean finish on the inside. I'm gonna start at my underarm seam using my stitch in the ditch foot. I'm gonna stitch in the ditch all the way around. If you don't have a stitch in the ditch, stitch in the ditch foot, what you can do is sew as close to that seam line right here, about an eighth of an inch away on top of the sleeve band and sew all, uh, all the way around. Once you do that, go ahead and create your gathering stitches at the sleeve cap and gather. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and stitched in a ditch all the way around the sleeve band, the last thing I need to do is go ahead and attach my sleeves and finish it off. Now I already have one of my sleeves done on this side and I went ahead and did my buttonholes and my buttons. So it's looking like this, my buttons on this side and the buttons holes on this side right here. Make sure you put, put some um, fray check in order to, you know, stabilize your buttonhole area. All right, so go ahead and you should have already pulled up some gathers for your sleeve. And then what you're going to do is with right sides together, I have showed you guys this so many times, you're going to pin at your underarm seams, pin at the double notch in the back, that symbolizes the back of your sleeve, pin at the front, which symbolizes the front of your sleeve, and then adjust your gathers and pin all the way around. So I'm going to flip it like this so I could really get a handle of my top. Now you should have a dot right here, which symbolizes uh, center, which should match up with your shoulder seam. So you're going to pin that right there. Now, the only thing you have to do is adjust your gathers and pin all the way around. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my sleeve my sleeve pinned onto my armhole area, starting at the underarm seam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and sew all the way around. Once you do that, go ahead and finish off your seam allowance and you are all done with your blouse. Now give it a wash and also press it out and style it. And if you do this top or blouse, make sure you tag me on Instagram at rochelle.handmade.design. I would love to see what you did with your blouse. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and until next time. All right, so there you have it. That is the complete pattern review and the sew along. I hope you enjoyed. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. Also, make sure you go over to Instagram and see at sewing dash and more or underscore and more on Instagram and see what she created for hashtag so much colors 90s edition. I hope you enjoyed this entire series. I'm sad that it's over now, but I will do an official roundup in a different video. So until next time, keep sewing. Thank you.